In this video, we will look at a few examples to help us practice using the SAS, or Side Angle Side Triangle Congruence Shortcut. So in example A, it says, what additional piece of information would you need to prove that these two triangles are congruent using the SAS tri uh, postulate? So, so far what we have is one pair of sides and one pair of angles. So we have an S and we have an A. So the only thing we need is another side. And it has to be a side that is on the other side of the angle. So it has to be these pair of sides that are congruent. If we said the other pair of sides were congruent instead, that actually would not be correct because that would be side side angle, which is not a way to prove that triangles are congruent. So you can't do it that way. The only possible answer is that you have to be able to show that BC is congruent to KM, and then you would know that the two triangles are congruent by SAS. In example B, it says write a two-column proof to show that the two triangles are congruent. We're given that C is the midpoint of AE and DB, and we're trying to prove that the triangles are congruent. So C is right here, it's the midpoint of AE, so that's that, and of DB. So if it's the midpoint of AE, that means it's right in the middle of AE. So that means that AC from A to C has to be the same length as from C to E. So we know that AC has to be congruent to CE based on this statement. Similarly, if C is the midpoint of DB, it means that BC has to be congruent to CD because C is again right in the middle. So, so far that's two pairs of sides and we need to have an angle in between them congruent as well. The angle in between them is right here and you should notice that those are vertical angles and vertical angles are always congruent no matter what situation you're in. So we actually do know that those two angles are congruent. So now that we've sort of previewed the situation, let's write our two column proof. So in a two column proof, remember you set it up by making your two columns. On the left are statements, and on the right are going to be reasons. And you always start with the given information and number each step to keep it organized. So the only thing that we were given was that C is the midpoint of AE and DB. And we know this, we can write it in our proof because it was given information. Now based on the given information, we know two things. We know that AC is congruent to CE and that's because C is the midpoint of AE. And also we know that BC is congruent to CD. And the reason we know those things is because of the definition of midpoint. Because C is a midpoint, it creates those two pairs of congruent segments. All right, the last thing that we talked about was the vertical angles, which gives us an angle so that we'll be able to show that the triangles are congruent. So the angles that we know are congruent are angle ACB and angle ECD. Remember, you couldn't just say angle C is congruent to angle C because that makes it sound like you're talking about the same angle each time, and they're actually two different angles that you're talking about. Angle C is ambiguous, so you have to use three letters. So the reason is vertical angles That's why those two angles are congruent. Now, notice in our proof we've mentioned a pair of sides, a pair of angles, and another pair of sides, and they are in that order in the picture, side, angle, side. So that means we have shown enough information to be able to say that the two triangles are congruent by side, angle, side, S-A-S. which means we are done with our proof. We've proved that the two triangles are congruent by SAS. And make sure when you're doing that, again, that the side angle side is in that order. The angle has to always be 
included between the two sides in order to use SAS.